time to look at what the papers have to say. We're joined by public affairs analyst Ambrose Igboke, who is on the line from Enugu, Southeast Nigeria. Mr. Igboke, good morning. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I was having a chat with you off the air. Do we have fewer queues in your part of the country uh, like we have in Lagos? Everywhere is queue and uh, it's, it's a terrible situation in Lagos. How, how is it in Enugu? Well, there are no clear queues here uh, because um, usually in the southeast, because uh, it's uh, off, off, off Lagos, you have a uh, crisis are not always sold at uh, a, the, the prices are not always sold at the price where you sell in Abuja, Lagos, and Port Harcourt. Okay. You understand me now? Okay. What the hell is normally, let's say, when it was 165 in Lagos, you, you don't get it 165 here. It's only a few filling stations that sell 155 in metropolis like Enugu, maybe on the Shaoka, Abakiliki, and the rest. When you start leaving those uh, capitals into the eastern land, like in Enugu here, when you start going towards Osaka and the rest, you start seeing them at 180 something, when they say 165. When it's been moved up, as for the past three weeks, uh, well, one month, uh, we'll divide for your PMS per liter here at uh, over 200 naira. So most filling stations are sell between 240 and 265 within the metropolis, and as much as 280 to 290 outside the state capital. All right. So because of they have already have their margins, profit margin to a staggering proportion, they don't. There are no fear keys. All right. All right. It's, it's, an, it's an interesting situation in the country today. Let's, let's start with a look at the nation newspaper. It has the following uh, headlines. A big one there. Oil. Buhari warns against Niger Delta mistakes in the north. Of course, um, the president uh, had inaugurated recently the, uh, the oil business in Gongola Basin. Uh, this is what he's, he's, he's saying at the launch of that. For oil exploration... Uh, Tinubu, I will recharge, recharge Lake Chad if elected. Um, you want to know what that means? Uh, you have to uh, read, you know, the nation newspaper to find out. Why Jonathan can't back Atiku by Wiki? Uh, I think is the latest project that he commissioned recently and uh, where he had, uh, I don't know who the latest uh, visa to Lagos State, River State is. Um, I think it was um, David Umahi. And he made that statement there. He says the PDP candidate humiliated the ex-president in 2015. Um, more from the nation. New Naira notes to go into circulation today. Interest rate now 16.5%. That's calling yesterday's Monetary Policy Com uh, Committee meeting. APC to launch. Crowd pulling app. Uh, raise funds. Party rejigs campaign plan. Document on 2.2 billion Naira. Sovereign Wealth Fund missing, Ministry tells Senate. <laughs> God have mercy upon us. Uh, no excuses for loss to Saudi Arabia, says Messi. That is a coming from the World Cup. We go quickly to the leadership newspaper, 2023. Christian leaders quiz Atiku Obi Adebayo over plans for Nigeria. Um, the writers to that. We won't endorse any presidential candidate, says Christian Association of Nigeria. Okay, it seems to be a U-turn. What happened? Give us a chance. We'll make Nigeria work again. PDP, Labour Party flag bearers. I'll recharge Lake Chad if elected president. What does that mean? Please read the paper to find out. More from the leadership. History as PMB commissions one billion barrel coal money crude oil drilling. Uh, Okay, congratulations to, to them. Court rejects request to order continuous voter registration. Talk about that in a top trending segment. Buhari unveils redesigned redesign notes today. CBN raises interest rate. Uh, we have uh, Governor Sule presents 1.48 billion Naira 2023 budget to Nassau Assembly. Why am I even reading that? <laughs> Why am I reading that? Um, all right. Let's, let's leave that. Let's leave that. Okay, I think this is also interesting. Samuel one state's impute in electricity bill. The Punch newspaper on Wednesday has the big story on its front page. 16.5% interest rate. Private sector predicts factories shut down. Higher bad loans. All right, uh, this means that they will not be able to pay back their loans 
uh, on an increasing rate. Uh, CBN interest rate hike will increase manufacturers' 5 trillion Naira debt. Monetary policy tightening will worsen inflation, says Nasima. Article B meet can tackle APC on governance. It's late to resume voter registration court rules. Fuel queues resurface in Lagos. Marketers blame depots. New narrow notes for circulation before December 15. That's us against a, a paper. I think it was uh, the nation that said they'll be released, uh, put into circulation today. Um, Punch demands 25.1 million narrow judgment debt from CBN. All right, what am I waiting for? Impeached Ekiti Speaker heads to court. Uh, it seems it's not over there. Abuja Bauchi crashes kill 44 FRSC plans mass burial. Very, very sad. There's a picture of the president inaugurating uh, the $3 billion oil exploration in Northeast. Don't, don't, don't forget, it's, they've not found the oil yet. They're looking for it. Um, that is what he's inaugurating. Quickly, from the Daily Trust. Uh, oil in North, Komani Drill attracts 1.33 trillion Naira investments, Buhari. Uh, we adopted co why we adopted co regulation uh, media owners. Uh, race to the National Assembly, Baguru Alero in Titanic Battle for Kebi Central. I'll implement your demands, Atiku tells Khan leaders. And uh, 66 travelers killed in Abuja, Borno, Kogi Plateau road incidents. Really sad uh, situation there. Um, um, Ambrose Spoke, okay, let's start with the, with the uh, interest rate story. Um, do you agree with uh, what the private sector? is saying as per the punch in newspaper, they're predicting that um, the manufacturing, the industries in the country, the ones that are still operating will shut down and that uh, there'll be more bad loans from the, ma the manufacturing and private sector because of this 16.5 that uh, Gordon Emifile and his MPC have increased the interest rate too. Well, first of all, Nigeria business entity and sector it has been strangulated by, uh, what I call it, uh, devilish economic policies over the years. And that is why, uh, through the structural adjusted program brought in by Ibrahim Badamosi Babangi uh, more than almost 40 years ago, we have started having decline in our manufacturing sector and in other business sectors. Uh, that is where we started applying what the uh, Brentwood institutions tell us. Our industries started dying. Our steel plants shut down. Our textile industry shut down. Our sugar factories shut down. Our automobile factories, uh, assembly plants uh, shut down. Our agriculture shut down. And all our the production set up shut down. And then we became a consuming nation. And then because of this incident, those who are importing goods to Nigeria in their own country, the program the, uh, the, the loan in their country, they get as low as some of them get 5% interest loan. Some of them get it as low as 3%. Some of them even, you know, have intervention funds from their government. They have subsidies. They have subsidies in agriculture. They have subsidies in, uh, in, in factory. Sometimes the government even go to other countries to negotiate businesses for them. I remember not too long ago when Jonathan was president, where uh, Angela Merkel came here to negotiate businesses for Syrian for uh, in Germany. And then because that is what other countries do. American government go to negotiate businesses for the big corporations like General Electric and others. And because they know that when they should go for over there, they'll bring tax back home. When they want to also borrow from the bank, here is is they borrow it as single digits. And so any economy that cannot borrow is, uh, uh, you know, uh, production sector or business sector or services sector and a trip load of less than 10, which is single digit, then it means that uh, they, they want to kill the industry. So uh, they, they are right to say that the business sector in Nigeria will suffer seriously if we already complain, the interest rate is already too high. The interest rate is already too high. You cannot borrow, look at the, for agricultural purposes. How many farmers can borrow? Uh, do you know the commercial rate still is 32%? We go to the banks who want to borrow. It's 32% officially. How many businesses can survive like that? So what we are saying is that it is evil 
it is able to actually want to increase the interest rate. Okay. MFLA should get creative on how to solve the problem of Nigeria. You understand? MFLA should get creative. He has been doing all kinds of uh, window dressing over the years. You understand? Uh -huh. So, from reprinting, the, he wants to from going into politics, so he wants to redesign the Naira. He had a big flip flop over the years. So, he has no strategy on how to run this country, uh, the economy of this country, in terms of from the CDN angle. And that is why we are getting this kind of scattered uh, approach to issues. We don't have any serious plan to recover this thing. Okay, uh, Mr. Mbuke, okay. let, let's, no let's move on. Yes, yeah. yeah, so let's move on to the other one. Um, still an economic issue. We've mentioned Gordon God and Mayfield. Let's stay with him. I'll say new Naira notes are set to be unveiled uh, today. Um, they're, they're targeting December uh, 15 as the deadline for circulating these uh, uh, new Naira notes uh, of 200, 500, or rather, uh, 1,500 Naira notes. What are, what are your thoughts on this? First of all, all over the world, the, 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 notes, Naira notes are designed. I mean, currencies are designed from time to time. But at this point in time, when our economy is, I mean, in very, very serious crisis, our first uh, uh, priority is not to design our Naira notes. We have not, so we have not even stressing the production sector. We are not, services, we have not done anything. We are, uh, countries, uh, companies are shutting down. Companies are migrating from Nigeria to Ghana and some other African countries. Uh, the economy is scattered, and then we are designing the Naira note. The Naira note is said, the value has fallen. So what are we designing? The exclusive idea that some people were, we are looking the economy and holding Naira and using those are financial excuses. What do we have the where, where do we have the EFCC? What do we have the GSS? Why can't we use the Intel to split out those who are committing money laundering? Is it the common man on the street that is holding money that will not see money to eat? Do you know how much it will cost CDN? to reproduce this diet, the entire Naira note in the, in the country. So for me, I think it's a wasteful exercise coming just few months to the election. Why did, you know, why did the government not allow the incoming government from May 29 to see what they can do with that? All right, Mr. Mr. Okay. So I think uh, this the designing of the Naira note is not just for the boys. Okay. Okay, Mr. Okay, let's move on to uh, the nation newspaper. In fact, a lot of other papers uh, have this story. With the new... Um, oil exploration initiative in the northern part of the country. Um, this is in the Gongola Basin. The initiative by the national, uh, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation is uh, called the Kormani Integrated Development Project in uh, Barambu, that's the Gongola Basin, the community between Bauchi and Gombe State. Uh, it's an oil expl exploration uh, project. Um, while talking to the NNPC or speaking, giving his speech, he had a piece of advice from the NNPC. He says that uh, the Niger Delta mistakes or the mistakes of the Niger Delta should not be uh, repeated in the northern part of the country. Um, what are your thoughts on, on the development and then the statement by the president? Well, it is good it's coming from the presidency and from the ruling class that there have been terrible mistakes done in the Niger Delta in terms of the oil spillage especially, the where the, the um, oil has been exploited from, has been, most of those parts of the country have been turned to wasteland because of uh, oil spill, spillage over the years. And all the efforts to even compensate, if they, they, that is one. Two is that the oil giants, the uh, International Oil Corporation, IOC, have not been held accountable the things IOCs cannot do, even in our neighboring countries like Algeria and some other African countries that are producing petroleum, the things they cannot try over there, the things they cannot try in Saudi Arabia, they are doing it recklessly here. And we're allowing them to go scot free. So that mistake cannot be repeated. In fact, there should be a policy 
that holds them responsible. Now, most of them are selling off their assets after they have wrecked, wrecked the country. They have sold their assets and migrated to another country to maybe to continue the wreck somewhere else. And we allow this to happen from the drilling of first drilling of oil when the oil was sighted in Oluguri in 1959. We have been on this till now. So it, 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 it's, it's so sad. You need to see the videos and pictures coming out from the Nigeria data. I grew up in Warwick. I remember as a, as, a, as a young chap going to secondary school, our uniform was white, you know, and then we, we go to, there was called acid rain. People in other parts of the country, they know, they know, we call it acid rain. Rain will fall, and then your uniform will have that with the black spots all over. Because of oil effects, because of gas flaring. So all these things should not be allowed to repeat itself in the Northeast. And that is a exactly granite then. I want to say that Nigeria should pull out of this climate change agreement uh, thing that the world is, the West is imposing on all over parts of the world and call it COP meeting and all those COP, greenhouse emission, cutting, all those things. Who heated up the greenhouse? It is the West. It is Europe. Europe was using uh, coal, was using fossil fuels, was using everything to develop their economy, to build all the, all the giant industries that have. And then when Africa is trying to, try to develop, they are telling us that uh, greenhouse emission and greenhouse growth. African leaders should cut that crap. All right. And stop all this. So we should exploit our mineral resources. We use our coal. We should use what we are getting in that uh, oil, both in the Niger Delta and the new one in the North East, to ensure that we maximize the use of fossil fuels to develop our economy. The wastage of the past 60 years should not be allowed to continue. All right. Mr. Buki, I'm sure you're also agreeing with uh, the All Progressives Congress presidential candidate, um, Ashiwa Jibola Metinibu, who said with, with, over this issue of environmental uh, uh, you know, uh, sustainability, uh, but uh, and protection that you can't tell the the church rat not to eat uh, the so to say you know or quote uh, poison communion you know looking at that that situation. Let's not go into that. Let's round off quickly with the um, a look at what the leadership has for us. It's um, talking about the uh, the stance of the Christian Association of Nigeria, whom we all thought had taken sides as far as the 2023 presidential election is concerned. But um, they are saying, because they met with uh, Obi, Peter Gregory Obi, the Labour Party's presidential candidate, and Atiku Abubakar, the People's Democratic Party a presidential candidate, to quiz them over their plans for the country. Uh, and uh, they are saying that we won't endorse any presidential candidate. That, to me, is, a, is an interesting one. Um, it seems the language of the Christian Association of Nigeria has been changing over the past uh, few weeks uh, or, or months, if, if you want to say that. What are your thoughts on this, the, uh, this, this, this quizzing of, of the two leading candidates? Uh, I don't think uh, Ashwaji Bolatinbu was there. Maybe he's going to go on a later date. I don't know. Well, it is not the place of Khan or any religious group on that matter to endorse any particular candidate. It is not their mandate. And doing that will be throwing themselves into partisan politics. The work of Khan is to guide the Christian body in Nigeria to be able to know what to do and explore uh, avenues for articulating the issues. That the issue of each Muslim Muslim teacher is, is what the Christian body in Nigeria has seen as a slight and an insult to the entire body. So these are the issues they can articulate. But to come out openly, to say that uh, they, they will support a particular candidate of a particular party, it, it cannot be done because even in Khan or in Christian uh, parties, uh, there are, there are, part, there are uh, you know, supporters of different political parties across the board in, in the Christian dome in Nigeria. So the umbrella body of Christians in Nigeria cannot come up to say that they, they support of any particular, that would be to you know, cause a split and disharmony in Christian, in, in the Christian body in Nigeria. So that cannot happen. But they have the right to, you know, like what you are talking about, support. I don't think they've supported anybody in the past. They are just voicing opposition to issues like or the issues of what the APC has done. For example, the Muslim Muslim teachers, which is a slap on, on, on Christianity in Nigeria. And so they have voiced it against it over the over time. And maybe that's what you call support. But they have not openly support any, and they won't do that because it is very wrong for them to take that extreme partisan position. All right. Uh, Ambrose Boke, thank you so much for your time. I thoroughly enjoyed uh, 
uh, your analysis and of course uh, the reportage you did for us uh, on the current situation of fuel supply in Enugu uh, State. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much for having me this morning. And that's uh, the size of a package and off the press. So we'll take a break now, of course. We'll let you know what happened today in history when we come back. We delve into our first major conversation. Please stay with us.